I really like doing research in New York. It's an incredibly diverse place in terms of socioeconomic backgrounds, race, religion, age differences, everything's here. My name is Jessica Hardy. I'm assistant professor of sociology at Hunter College. I came to Hunter because I love New York. Sociology broadly is a study of people and of social groups. And then demography, it's a study of population. So in particular, looking at how many people are born, how many people die, immigration into a place and emigration out of a place to figure out how population changes over time. For birth, we look at fertility rate, which is the number of births, usually it's counted as the number of births per woman. With death, we look at how many people die and at what ages they die at. That's also called the mortality rate. Iraq, Ghana, Mongolia. I recommend that these candidates... And then the immigration is the number of people who move into a place, whether that's a city, a state, or a country. And emigration is the number of people who move out of that same place. A population pyramid is a really neat graphical representation of a population. This is an example of a population pyramid. And what this does is it depicts the population in the United States at a particular time. So for here, we have the population of the United States in 2015. And the way it's structured is that it shows a number of men, boys and men, on the left side in blue and then women in red. And each of these bars going across shows a particular age group. So the lowest bar is children ages zero to four, the next bar is five to nine, and so on, up to the top bar is 85 and over. There are other ways of showing population as well. For example, we could use timeline graphs that show population changes over time. So we could have a, a graph running from 1900 to 2015 and show the total population of all men and women through lines over that time period. Or we could break it down by, by race, let's say, or immigrant, non-immigrant origin. One main way that population information is collected is through the U.S. Census. And the U.S. Census began in um, 1790 and has continued uh, about every 10 years since then. So the last census that we had was in 2010, and the next one will be in 2020. And this is a short survey that the head of a household will usually fill out that counts the number of people in a household. And it also collects some really basic information about the sex of the people in the household, Hispanic origin, the race of the people in the household, and whether they own the home, as well as a couple of other items. The government uses this to apportion representation in things like the House of Representatives. They use it for funding purposes in terms of figuring out which states or which cities need more money. For example, as more and more people move to New York City, New York City's infrastructure is very old. Their subways are very old. And so trying to plan around that and fix that structure while you're still trying to accommodate a great number of people is a big challenge for the city. We study birth, death, immigration, and emigration in order to understand population flows, not only in the United States, but worldwide. And this population changes can have enormous effects on individuals, on governments, on countries. So I think demography is a really important thing to study because it's one of the main ways in which the government and policymakers plan for the future. And this kind of research helps us understand what affects larger social phenomenon like a recession, changes in policy at the governmental level, how that matters to individuals and how that matters to families.